that this lifeline church is revived. And that revival will bring revival to Malaysia. And that revival is started in Malaysia. And it will spread to all countries in Asia. And not only to the countries in Asia, but to all nations around the world. But he needed one person. Can you be that person? Can you come to the Lord in any situation? Can you hold that pot of oil with you? Can you sell anything to hold that pot of oil? Can you sell that pot of oil? Can you sell the pleasures of this world Can you sell the pleasures of this world to hold that oil in your heart? Can you sell the desires of your flesh to hold that oil in your heart? The joy of the Lord is our strength. Sometimes the joy of the world brings us sorrowness. But the joy of the Lord is our strength. Anyway, I'm so glad that you are able to understand me. And I'm so glad that the sister is also able to translate to us. <laughs> How many of us want to see revival? And, and nowadays everybody around the world are really seeking for revival a couple of months back my wife and I with our family are in America and we were traveling to many states and what we found is everybody wanted to see revival. And everybody is praying for revival. So today our topic is what do you have in your house for revival? If somebody comes to your house like friends or family or relatives, so you will make sure that uh, they will have enough what they needed in the house. Likewise, the Bible says we should have something to have revival. And today we are going to study that. We are going to learn five spiritual lessons from 2 Kings chapter 4 verses 1 to 7. Yeah, 2 Kings chapter 4 verses 1 to 7. So let us read verse by verse to learn five spiritual lessons. So I will read the first verse. Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead. And thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord, and the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be born men. Render Rajaka Ranga Madaram, Tilka the Sikuria, Putter and Urbanik, Manavia Yenda, or his three Elisa Viparte, over the Adianaki and Purushan Yeranda Ponan, over the Adian Katal Kupayan the Nadana in Bade Arivi. Current Kodutavan Ipode in Yerend Kumar and Yutanaka Adamilaki Kola Vetu Kola, Vandan and Ral. Here, a woman is coming under the prophet Elijah. Elijah, the Tilka the Sikuria, or the Sikuria, or the Sikuria. 
and she has a problem what is her problem her husband died her husband was also a man of God he feared the Lord but had he had some debts without paying his debts he died now the creditor who has given money to that family has come to take away her two sons as slaves and that is her situation but the first spiritual lesson that we learn here is no matter what happens in your life you have to come to Jesus see she never lost her hope in life though her husband feared the Lord they still had debts though the husband feared the Lord yet he died without paying off debts though the creditor has come to take away her two sons she did not lose hope she did not run away from God but she came unto the prophet no matter what your situation is no matter what circumstances you are going through in your life come to Jesus because he has solution for all your problems God will definitely give you solution in his right time you can come to Jesus because Jesus said in John chapter 6 verses 37 he if anyone comes to him he will never cast him away your husband may cast away at times your wife may cast away at times at times your children may cast away at times your family and friends may cast away but if you come to Jesus and Jesus will never cast away with that hope this woman now has come to the prophet Elisha when you come to Jesus do you know what will happen let us read next verse second verse says and Elisha said unto her what shall I do for thee tell me what hast thou in the house and she said thine handmaid hath not anything in the house save a pot of oil and now the prophet is asking her what do you have in your house she doesn't have anything in the house except the pot of oil the pot of oil represents our spiritual life pot is our life and the oil is the Holy Spirit we must have oil in our pots this woman has sold out everything that she had 
She might have sold her bed. She might have sold her bed. She might have sold all the vessels in her kitchen. She might have sold her house. She might have sold her property. But she did not sell that pot of oil. So now she is telling to the prophet, we have sold everything that we had. We tried to solve our problems by selling all that we have. But nothing solved our problem. So now we have only that pot of oil. The second spiritual lesson that we have to learn here is don't ever sell your spiritual life for the worldly things Satan always tempts us to sell our time with God for the world Satan always tempts us to sell our time with God for the world. Many Christians nowadays, they are selling their time with God for their social media. Many people give away God's money for the worldly pleasures. Don't sell your time with God for the worldly things. Because that is not going to help you. But the pot of oil will help you. So you must have that spiritual life. Don't give away your time with God for any other thing. But many times in our lives, what would we do when we take Bible to read, when we go to pray, somebody will call. Somebody will come. Some interesting notification will come in our mobile phone. Some breaking news will come up on television. We stop praying. We stop reading the Bible. We stop coming to church and we end up giving our time to the worldly things. When you do that, the pot will be broken. When the pot is broken, oil cannot stay in it. Don't break your pot by spending your time with the worldly things. Let your pot be filled with the oil of Holy Spirit. When you have that pot, that's when God will do miracles in your life. And the amazing verse is Proverbs 23:23 says, Don't sell the truth but buy it. Don't sell the truth. The spirit of truth is sent unto us to lead us unto all the truth. That was Jesus said in John 16. So we have to have the truth, that Holy Spirit. 
இந்த சத்திய ஆவியாக அந்த என்னை பசு தாவியை நம்ம என்னை மூலமா என்னையாக வைத்திருக்கிறோம் no matter what happens in your life உங்களுடைய வாழ்க்கையில் என்ன நடக்கலாம் என்ன நடந்தாலும் no matter how your situations are உங்களுடைய வாழ்க்கையில் எந்த ஒரு சூழ்நிலையிலே இருந்தாலும் no matter what your circumstances are உங்களுடைய சந்தர்ப்ப சூழ்நிலை எப்படி இருந்தாலும் Don't sell your spiritual life. உங்களுடைய ஆவிக்குரிய வாழ்க்கையை விட்டு போடாதீங்க. Hold that spiritual life. ஆவிக்குரிய வாழ்க்கையை பிடித்து Hold it until the end. அந்த வாழ்க்கையை கடைசி வரைக்கும் கடைசி வரைக்கும் பிடித்து Until you die or until Christ comes. இயேசு கிறிஸ்து வருகை வரைக்கும் நீங்கள் மரிக்கிற வரைக்கும் அந்த வாழ்க்கையை பிடித்து போடுங்கள். Because in the end that oil is going to help you. because in the end that pot is going to help you let's see how that pot of oil helped this woman the next verse says i'm reading the third verse then he said go borrow these vessels abroad of all thy neighbors even empty vessels borrow not a few appozhudhu avan nee poi unnudi ayil vittukkar ellar edathil ellar edathilum anega vem paathirangalai kettu vaangi sri poi sri edathile andor sonnar mane anega edathile poi kettu vaangi va paathirathe endru avan sonnathe nam paathirom now the prophet elisha is telling her to go and get the empty vessels நீ போய் காலியான பாத்திரத்தை கொண்டு வா என்று திருதரிசி எலியா சொல்றதை நாம் பார்த்தோம் ரிமெம்பர் இஃப் ஷீ டசன்ட் ஹேவ் தட் பார்ட் ஆஃப் ஆயில் இன்னைக்கு நினைவு கூறுங்க நினைவு நினைவு வைத்து கொள்ளுங்கள் இந்த நேரத்துல பாத்திரத்தில் அவளுக்கு என்ன இல்லை என்றார் ஷீ டசன்ட் नीड தி எம்டி வெஷல்ஸ் அவளுக்கு வந்து அந்த பாத்திரம் காலியான பாத்திரம் மட்டும் தான் இருக்கும் बिकॉज ஷீ ஹேஸ் தட் பார்ட் ஆஃப் ஆயில் அவளுக்கு அந்த பாத்திரத்தில் என்ன இருக்கிறபடியால் நவ் தி ப்ராஃபிட் இஸ் டெல்லிங் ஹர் டு கோ அண்ட் கெட் எம்டி வெஷல்ஸ் அந்த திருதரிசி போய் சொன்னா நீ காலியான மற்ற பாத்திரங்களை கொண்டு வா என்று சொன்னார் அண்ட் தி थर्ड ஸ்பிரிச்சுவல் லெசன் தட் we learn here is முக்கியமான ஆவிக்குரிய Unless you empty yourselves, God is not going to fill you. We always wanted God to fill us. We pray to God, Lord, fill me with your blessings. We pray to God, Lord, fill me with your healing. ஆண்டவரே எங்களுடைய முடிய முடிய எண்ணங்களினால் எங்கள் நெருப்பம் என்று ஜெபிக்கிறோம். We pray Lord fill me with your anointing. ஆண்டவரே முடிய அபிஷேகத்தினால் என்னை நெருப்பம் என்று நாம் ஜெபிக்கிறோம். Yes God is able to fill you. ஆனா ஆம் ஆண்டவர் அப்படியே உங்களை நான் நெருப்பி ஆசீர்வதிக்க வல்லவரா இருக்கிறார். But you have to empty yourselves. ஆனாலும் நீங்க செய்ய வேண்டிய காரியம் என்ன வேணும்? Remember what happened at the wedding at Cana in John chapter 2. When the wine was over, when the wine was over, in the trachea, some wine they poured up there. That's when Jesus told them to fill the water pots with the water. If there was no emptiness, Jesus would not have done that miracle. When they became empty, Jesus filled them. Yeah, when they are made empty, Jesus filled them. So unless you make yourselves empty god will not fill you neenga kaaliyana piraga nichayam aadavar ungale nerappuvar amen there are a lot of things in your lives you have to empty yes, come on anega kaaliyal ungal vaathila neenga kaali panna vendum how can we empty ourselves eppadi namba nammalai kaali pannuvathe this word of god will help us to empty ourselves this word of god has power to empty yourselves there are a lot of big stones in your spiritual life that you cannot empty yourselves 
Jeremiah chapter 23 29 says this word of God is hammer that can break that stones into pieces it is very hard to remove big stones but when you use this word of God and make them into pieces, it is easy to empty yourself. And the same verse says, word of God is fire and it can burn and fire all unnecessary things in your life. There are always unwanted trees and plants in our spiritual life that will not help you to be fruitful. But this fire can fire all those trees and plants which are not helping to be fruitful. And Psalms 119.105 says, The word of Lord is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Many times our spiritual lives are darkened so we could not see what are the unuseful things that are in our life. If there is no electricity in your house, and you will never know what are the unuseful things that are piling up in your house. But when you have light, you can see this is useful and this is not useful. Likewise, this word of God is a light when you take this light into your heart, and that word of God will help you to remove all useless things. It has power to throw away all useless things in your life. And the Bible says in Ephesians uh, chapter 6 verse 17 that this word of God is the sword of the Spirit. Sometimes our friendship with the world, our fellowship with our ungodly people may grieve the Holy Spirit. Sometimes your heart may be filled with the friendships of this world. You may not be able to cut them off. But this sword can cut them off. But you have to take this word into your heart. And Ephesians chapter 6 verse 25 and 26 says, This word of God is water of life. There may be a lot of dirtiness in your heart. But this water of life can cleanse you and it can put all dirty away. That's how this word of God helps you to empty yourself. When you have the Holy Spirit in your life, the Holy Spirit will encourage us you to keep this word of God in your heart. When you keep God's word in your heart, 
That's when you will make empty. When you are make empty. That's when God will fill you. My dad was a Hindu devotee. Hindu, Hindu. He was possessed with demons in his teenage. He visited all Hindu temples. Hindu. Hindu. He visited all Hindu temples. But he could not be delivered. Finally, one Hindu priest told him that he has to suffer with these demons. There is no deliverance from, for him in this world, in this life. So he was hopeless and addicted to all bad habits. But one day, one of his friends told him about Jesus. And he, he told to his friend, I don't believe in Jesus because we have million gods. But that night Jesus appeared to him in a dream and said I am the way, the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And next day he went to his friend and told him I heard this voice and I saw someone in the vision. And he told my dad, it is Jesus and the words which you, you heard are from this Bible. And he gave him a New Testament Bible to read. When he started to read the Bible, the demons in him were troubled. And when he started to read the Bible, the demons in him left him. So whenever the demons used to come and trouble him in the night time, he used to read the Bible. But at that time, my grandmother, my dad's mother was a Hindu. So she did not allow him to switch on the light to read the Bible in the middle of the night. In fact, she threw the Bible out of the house. That's when the Holy Spirit gave an idea to my dad to memorize the word of God. When he started to keep God's word in his heart, he got delivered from demons. Once his heart was filled with demons, but when this word of God got into his heart, he was made empty. When he started to empty himself, using this word of God, and then God started to fill him. And today, by the grace of God, he has memorized over 5,000 scriptures from the Holy Bible. And he taught us the same to memorize the word of God. And when I got saved at the age of 11, 
And when I decided to do full time ministry at the age of 14, I had a lot of time. So the Lord helped me to memorize his scriptures. By the grace of God, I have memorized over 1200 scriptures. And by the grace of God, I have memorized all 22 chapters in the book of Revelation. And uh, when I was about to get married, and I know in India we have dowry system. So, so usually uh, the bride will give bri uh, dowry to the bridegroom and uh, even I wanted to take uh, uh, dowry <laughs> but the dowry which I wanted is I told my wife that I want you to memorize thousand scriptures to marry me and she gave the dowry and married me so when we keep God's word in our heart and God's word will help us to empty ourselves God, God's word helps us to remove all unnecessary useless things from our lives so the third spiritual lesson is you have to you have to empty yourself then God will fill you when you have emptied yourself and next what the prophet is telling here let us read verses uh, from 4 to 6 and when thou art come in thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons and shall pour out into all those vessels and thou shalt set aside that which is full so she went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons who brought the vessels to her and she poured out and it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said unto her son bring me at a vessel and he said unto her there is not a vessel more and the oil stayed <laughs> the prophet here is telling her one instruction and what is that instruction the pot which you have oil has power to fill all these empty vessels but to use that pot of oil and to fill these empty vessels you have to shut the door so the fourth spiritual lesson is we should have the experience of shutting the door the shutting of door is an example to our personal prayer to God Jesus said in Matthew 6 verse 6 
But though when thou prayest, but though when thou prayest, you have to go into the closet. And you have to shut the door and pray to the Father, which is in secret to reward you openly. Why should we shut the door? What happens when we shut the door? What happens if we don't shut the door? It is good to have group prayers. It is good to have prayers in the church. But it is very, very important to have personal prayer life. Because when you pray in group, you just concentrate on your good things. But when you pray personally in secret, that's when the Holy Spirit will revive where you are falling down. That's when the Holy Spirit tells you where you are in sin. If you don't shut the door and pray, a lot of things will distract you. If that woman would not have shut the door and put that oil into the empty vessels, what would happen? The people that gave her empty vessels would have come into the house and told her there is power in our vessel. The power is in the pot and in the oil. But if you open the door, people will come and say, No, the power is in the empty vessel. So when they see that empty vessel is being filled, they will take away their vessel. So in the end, you will not have an opportunity to experience the blessing of God. So to experience the power and the blessing of God in your life, you must have the experience of shutting down your door. Many of us have experience of shutting the door for committing sin. Many youngsters, many people shut the door to watch pornography. Many people double check if the door is locked or not when they commit adultery. But you must have the experience of shutting the door to spend personal time with God. When you pray alone, that's when God blesses you. When that Jacob became Israel, when he spent all alone that night with God. That personal prayer life will transform you. That personal prayer life will change your situation. That personal prayer life will change your circumstances. When we see the life of Jesus, though he is the Son of God, though he was 
preaching the word of God from morning to evening. The Bible says she used to spend all the night in prayer all along with Father. If Jesus Christ, who is the Son of God, has to spend all the night in prayer personally with Father, how much more we should spend? Personal prayer is very important. When she shut the door, all the visions were filled. Let us read the last verse to learn the fifth spiritual lesson. Then she came and told the man of God. And he said, Go sell the oil and pay the debt and live thou and thy children of the rest. Now God has changed the entire situation. She was in a situation where her sons are being sold, but now God has made her to sell the oil. Yes, God can change your situation. Yes, God can turn your circumstances. Yes, God can raise you up from the pit into palace. God can bring and bond your broken marriage. God can change your children which you cannot change. God can give you healing for the disease which doctors could not give you medicine. God can change your situation of poverty into prosperity. Yes, she is able to do that in your life. But you have to come to God. But you have to have oil in your pots. But you should not have sold that part at any cost. But you should have the experience of emptying yourselves. But you must have the experience of shutting the door and praying to God personally. When you do that, yes, God can change our situation. Yes, God can turn your circumstances. Jesus said in Luke chapter 6, verse 21. Blessed are ye that are hunger now and ye will be filled. Blessed are ye that are weeping now, you will laugh. God can change the situation. God can turn the circumstances. When you are revived, you will revive others. Just think for a moment. How much people in the town would have been excited? Excited. She was in debt. 
she has nothing left in her house. And the bit la will go no mail. But that oil filled all the empty vessels. And all of the pots of the water, the money, and the cars, and all the pots of the water. Now she has everything to pay off. வார்த்தையினால் God will fill you. God will revive you. God will revive you. The revival will start within you. And when you are revived, the people around you will be revived. And when this lifeline church is revived, and that revival will bring revival to Malaysia. And that revival is started in Malaysia. and it will spread to all countries in asia and not only to the countries in asia but to all nations around the world but if you need that one person can you be that person can you come to god in any situation can you hold that a pot of oil with you amen and the patrathile enne irukku parshuthavi endra enne kondu varungal Amen. Can you sell anything to hold that pot of oil? And the pottery to let it that day. Any any bit of magai. Ulla that the kariya da kaga the bitu pora. Can you sell the pleasures of this world to hold that oil in your? The ulla that to let it that each egal pe ani ke the any bitu pora. Can you sell the desires of your flesh to hold that oil in your? The palms that the may say each egal kaga the any any ke bitu pora the egal. Can you empty your vessels? Hallelujah. Father, they need a kali panidila. Can you say Jesus I need you only? By Jesus we only matre. I don't want anything in my life that podu matra. That grieves your holy spirit. Engal vera ondru venda mandavara neenga matra engal vera. Even if it is benefit to me. Idhu engalukku oru prayojanama irundhaal adhu engal venda. I don't want that. I only need you, Jesus. I always wanted to live a life that is pleasing to you. Empty me, Lord. Let all useless things go away from my life. No thing that displeases my Lord can stay in my life. And no the prayer will not the carry on praying at the Lord. No friendship, no relationship, no fellowship that grieves my God should stay in my life. And that the man of the I came on by the matter of the Lord and the I came will not the body that none but the Lord. Yet who I am the one who carry my in the Lord. Yet who the devil carry it? Yet I love the body that in the Lord that the Lord has brought to empty. Ask God to empty. வார்த்தைக்கட்டும் <laughs> And with the bear, bear, that way, I don't think you can jump up and down. I spend about three to five hours. Na, moon and all, man, I do every day. Na, jump up and down. In prayer every day. Over and all, moon and all, I do many times. 
we not only just memorize the scriptures but we recite them every day I worship the Lord with his word I pray the Lord according to his word that's how the Holy Spirit is helping me to spend more time with him my dad spends about 5 to 8 hours a day I'm not telling you all to spend that much time. I know you have jobs to do. But you have to make a commitment to the Lord. That I will spend every day 15 minutes personally with you. Or half an hour, one hour, whichever is possible to you. You have to dedicate seven time to spend time with God. When you do that, you will see the miracle in your life. By the grace of God, I have written two books, one on prayer and one on worship. I have brought about 40 copies for this church. I wanted to give it for free of cost. I'm not here to make money. I wanted to see people being getting close to God. I want people to live a life that is pleasing to our Heavenly Father. I'm so sorry I could not bring them because I came directly from the pulpit in the other church. But I will hand over them to Pastor Shoba. And I wanted to thank all the kids who stayed here. My wife and I do ministry among poor and street kids in India and kids in prisons. And the Lord has helped me to write a book called Animals and Birds of the Bible. It is a pictorial book. It has pictures. And uh, there are 30 animals and birds that which we can learn spiritual lessons. I have also brought those books. I have also brought those books. And the pastor will give you next week. And I pray those books will be a blessing to you. So once again, I thank the Lord for this wonderful opportunity and I want to thank uh, Pastor James and uh, Pastor Shoba. And there is strong presence of the Lord in this place. And I believe when I come next time, it will be expanded even more. All glory to God. Amen. Amen.